thank you uh, so what I'm going to do I is that so the assumption is quite the same as yesterday so I had a cast from f of say sk number one n and this I had a compatible system of uh, Garo representation, and then I take a uh, p modulo p for pick one prime p, and that I call it rho bar. So this has values from Garo group one over q to g l two of some finite field of characteristic p, and I suppose this is irreducible. Ordinary, ordinary means that rho restricted to the composition group at p is uh, and this guy is unramified. Then uh, I pick a deformation, so rho having values. So uh, then, uh, as a base of uh, for deformation theory, I take a splitting field of rho bar. Uh, uh, so this is a finite extension. And then I have a uh, f p rho, this is a max uh, only p ramified p profinite extension over f rho bar. And um, so this is G, the gamma group is G. And uh, I suppose that the ramification index outside P is uh, prime to P. And actually, um, I basically, my theorem is very stupid when K is greater than or equal to 2. So if it is uh, weight 1, Actually, so weight one case, weight one means that this RP is just the uh, same for all P. It's art in representation, so the image of R is finite. So this group, I call this group, say, G. Uh, then if you pick a prime P outside the order of this group, then the all the ramification index is obviously prime to p. So this condition, really I need to do something with weight one case. Uh, but actually, uh, even higher weight case, some of the things I do works well. So I don't immediately go into this weight one situation, but I just assume uh, the ramification index of any prime of this finite extension f rho bar is prime to p. Okay. Um, then I had a deformation condition that I pick a deformation law. I wrote the functor f a last time, uh, and you have a from now it's from g to g l two a, and um, uh, law is congruent to no bar modulo maximal ideal of a and something. Then yesterday I defined the Selma group of a joint representation of rho. And uh, we had a Selma group of a joint representation of a universal guy, universal deformation. And uh, it is somehow you take a Pontryagin dual. Uh, we want to relate these two uh, to compute the number of generator of this group. Uh, 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 and the point here is that because of universality, from universal ring to A, you have a morphism of phi such that phi composed this big law is isomorphic to your law. Uh, and anyway, they are isomorphic. You can just pick the representative law given by this guy. So I, I can just remove this all the time as I call it here, like this, this way. And um, um, then actually, so this is a T, uh, this is R module 
So you tensor R with respect to this algebra homomorphism phi with A. And you would expect that to relate these two. And this is actually isomorphic for any choice of law. That's the kind of things I want to show. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, I want to also show that a joint row, this big row, is also like in dual is isomorphic to Kähler differential of a universal ring. And I will tell you how to make this universal ring as algebra over US algebra. This is a canonically algebra over US algebra. And you have this kind of uh, isomorphism you have. So, uh, so this means that this guy is omega r over a tensor r phi of a. So if you pick f, a to be f, then everything becomes uh, a joint of rho bar. So this is uh, actually finite, so I don't need to take Pontiac in dual. Uh, and then um, this is omega r over lambda tensor r phi of f. And as you know, this is this is a very basic of ring theory or algebraic geometry, whatever. This is a tangent space, um, cotangent space of R over lambda. I mean, the maximal idea of R modulo maximal idea of R square plus lambda, right? So the dimension of this over F dimension over over f of this thelma of a joint rho bar, first of all, by this tells you that is the number of generators, minimal number of generators of r over lambda, right? Because if you have a basis here, so say basis x1, xr you have then a lambda double bracket the power series ring you pick and then you bring down to r just xr goes to this xr because this xr uh, actually uh, and base and then you pick xi one xr which goes down to this in the maximal ideal, and you bring it to this way, then you get a surjection, and then you get a, uh, this number of generators. But on the other hand, by Nakayama's lemma, this guy is a number of, this is a number of generator, ring generator of R over lambda, but this guy, from this side, this is just a number of generator of now, a module, Selma, Pontryagin dual, right? So if you know this dimension, I will know the number of generators of this guy for any choice of deformation automatically. And therefore, um, then I try to prove this when, try to understand that when this tangent space has dimension one. And dimension one was zero. Zero is a trivial case, but then you, you 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 know what happens. Okay, that's what I try today. Okay. So I slightly change my deformation functor. Maybe I just write d of a to be this row g to gr to a ordinary uh, and uh, all the condition I made so row mod maximal ideal is I, I, I use like to have equality not isomorphism so this modulo equivalence relation so yesterday I said that is a isomorphism, so it's a conjugation by all GR2. Uh, and now I just make this a strict equivalence. This means conjugation 
by principal congruence subgroup and max of maximal idea. So this is a kernel of GL2 of A goes down to GL2 of F ID. This is a mod reduction map. Then this won't change, and this functor as a functor is the same as yesterday's one. I mean, there's a natural. This goes into F, and it's of course the same uh, things you get. So thi this is slightly um, easier to handle. All right. Then the, uh, there's a theorem by Mazur. So. I all that time assume p distinguishedness condition. So the if p distinguished, this means delta bar is not equal to epsilon bar. Okay? And then this dA is isomorphic to home of W algebra, W is a width vector ring of this finite field F uh, from R. So there exists a unique R in the people finite local ring with residue field F. So it's a W algebra automatically. And uh, it satisfies this condition. It's representable. So. Um, you are bringing phi here, and the phi composes the universal guy. And it's class, class of this. But, but by this, if you fix this guy, universal guy, in the class, you have a unique one all the time. So often I write just by equality. All right, so this is kind of famous result of Mazur. So you can just believe it, I don't prove it, but uh, any sort of deformation theory book or Galois representation, you can find it too. All right. So now I, I'm the this R universal ring is so the, the story goes on to um at this moment I only assume this. But further, you assume that rho bar over q mu p is still irreducible, absolutely irreducible. Then they are, they and wires have shown that that this R is canonically isomorphic to Hegel. Okay, but for the moment, I, I don't need that. So this R, um, is so the, here's a remark. R is a lambda algebra. Okay, so the why? Uh, the point here is that you just this determinant rho bar is a character from G to F cross, right? So uh, this, of course, includes have an inclusion to W cross because this is a width vector ring of F. A and so you, you have a Tahimira leaf that I write chi. And this, of course, factor through Galois group of Q of mu of some n p to the infinity and p to the sum power over Q. Uh, to F, no, W cross, and uh, because, as I said, that ramification index is prime to P, this new is just 0 over 1, and N is something prime N, and this N is supposed to be smallest minimum of that guy, so the conductor of guy, essentially prime to P conductor of guy. Then, you know, I consider the functor dimension one version 
now it is just a z to a cross character such that phi modulo maximal ideal of a is equal to this determinant of rho bar, chi bar modulo maximal ideal, and um, um, so this is the formation functor of this guy. This 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 g um, essential the, the ramification uh, p is very big, but the ramification outside the p is prime to p in the ramification index and it's just finite. Okay? So um, this tells you that uh, the, the this will factor through this Galois group of Q mu and P infinity. I just put this one, Q. And this is, as yesterday I said, it is gamma times mu P minus 1 times there's an end part. Uh, yesterday I didn't have an N part, but I, I now allowed a prime to P N part. It's factor through like this. And therefore, uh, the, this, this is represented by a universal ring. So, uh, so that is again a USL algebra. Lambda. But this lambda is over W. So lambda is W, W bracket gamma. And uh, you have a universal character phi uh, from G to the cross of this guy. Just sigma is sent to uh, the class of sigma restricted to Q infinity. The CP extension, now you, you need to put chi of sigma here. This guy is from W. This is a group element, and this is the universal character. So um, get that. So you, you have a phi, then this um, the, there's there's a iota here such that iota compose this universal guy is phi, something like that. And in particular, determinant of universal guy. Two-dimensional universal guy is in D of this R. So there exists a unique algebra homomorphism. Maybe I would write I R. So this is I A, iota A from lambda to R such that iota R composed with this universal guy is determinant of law. Okay? So th therefore that means R is a lambda algebra. So there's another reason that I actually changed the uh, symbol for deformation functor from F to D. I consider now I shrink the category slightly because R is already lambda algebra. Why not you just take um, P profinite local ring, which is a lambda algebra with residue field F? Okay? Then you, you, you can think of this functor D um, to set such that D of A is just the same, nothing different, but it, 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 I assume that this is from G to GL2 of A, but A runs lambda algebra, okay? 
that to that, rho modulo maximal ideal of A is just rho bar. And I would say that the determinant of rho is algebra structure of A composed with uh, this, this composed with, uh, how I can say, phi. Uh, yes. So, but this is actually the same ring. Now this Mazars theorem I erase, and uh, um, the same ring R represents this factor. So this phi is actually, I said that iota R from lambda to R, but whatever, without assuming R is equal to this Heck algebra T, you have all the time has a subjection to this because I constructed Galois representation, which is a deformation of this uh, low bar, having values in GL2 of t, which is ordinary long ago, uh, and uh, that is from this row goes to this one by this. So this is by this pi, pi composed with rho, right? Uh, and uh, another condition, the Terawari's condition that the Galois representation is still reduced over Q mu p, then this is actually a nice morphism. In other words, composition this, this is lambda, uh, also my theorem that this is a free of finite rank over lambda. Uh, that is known, so this has to be in injection. Okay? So this phi is actually determinant of rho, universal guy. So that of universal guy is universal character. That's sort of natural outcome, right? And um, the what I wanted to say is that proposition that this D of A, now I, hereafter, this D is all the time restricted to this lambda algebra, okay? So that's why I actually changed the notation a little bit. Uh, and this is isomorphic canonically to harm lambda algebra of the same maze as ring to A. It's kind of trivial, actually. So, start from Row and regard it in FA, right? Then by Mazars result, we have a phi from R to A such that phi composed row is no, phi composed big row is row. This means what? This means the phi, you take a determinant rho here, then you get a determinant of rho there, and this gives rise to, the, by universality, uh, this, this is iota A composed with this phi, but phi is that rho. Right, so this phi is a lambda algebra of a morphism automatically, and uh, therefore you get this stupid result. Okay, so that's kind of somehow important. Okay, so um, because of our ordinary assumption, I just fix the composition group at P such that this universal guy restricted the P is really a pattern, no, not, not up to conjugation, it's really a triangular epsilon zero, delta bold face, something this, and this is unramified. All right. 
that means whatever law I, I as as I said that I pick I pick the one which is specialized exactly by law. So law D P is also exactly epsilon zero delta star. All right. So now I want to relate first with the um So I want to relate a joint Selma group and um, some sort of phi set, subset of uh, this D, a kind of things I try. So. This is the next thing I would do. So this is the, I want to realize somehow in a deformation space, uh, the deformation uh, functor, the Selma group. Um, Selma group is defined cohomologically, and uh, deformation functor is just a set. But um, um, so pick a finite so it's really cardinality finite a module x and um, you consider the ring a double bracket x I will write this is by definition a direct sum x so the element is a and uh, direct sum x so the product is just a, a a prime for this one this is a module so direct sum a times x prime plus a prime x in other words the x is an idea of this ring of square zero right okay so I want to study Selma group of rho zero, so that I pick rho zero in D of A. The set is phi x I write is something like um, deformation in D of A x important point is that this is finite therefore this still belongs to C L lambda okay? so you can plug in this algebra into D alright and as I said by specializing universal guy I have all the time unique choice so I don't put the equivalence relation kind of thing so it is low modulo x is exactly law node. Okay, so that's the set. Okay, so then um of course I need to there's an equivalence relation there. If you impose this the condition is gamma x gamma x is 1 plus the square matrix with coefficients in x it is in GL2 of AX principal congruence subgroup modulo capital X okay without this I have a trouble because this is equivalence class even though you can pick exactly this one uh, by, by using universal guy alright then um, I want to relate law to a co-cycle homogeneous so this is from Z to 
adjoin to x. What adjoin to x means? Adjoin to x is I have a joint of row node, right? And then you tensor from over A dx. Okay? Then you have a Galois action here. So this is a Galois module. Okay? Um, so I, I try to associate one core cycle, homogeneous, inhomogeneous one core cycle. How to do that? This argument is due to Mesa, and uh, um, it's quite simple. So I, I can write row. So you plug in some Galois element, G, is row node G, direct sum of uh, U prime row G. Th this, this has values in uh, GL2 of A. This has values in M2 of X. Then you, you, this is a representation, you compute. So this is, at, at one side, this is row node GH, direct sum, you prime row GH by definition, but you can just row node G direct sum, you prime row G, row node GH, Direct sum u prime row h, and um, because m you make a product of this guy with this guy, x squared is zero, you get zero. So you can forget about the product of this. So you get row node. The product of that is row node g h. This is a representation, and row node g u prime row h plus u prime row g row node h. So uh, this guy is equal to that guy. So you get a stupid relation. You know the row g h equal row node g u prime row h plus u prime g row node h. Then you define u row g to be u prime row g row node g inverse. You see this guy has values in m2x. So this is sort of small add x, right? The original uh, capital add x is trace zero. So this is trace zero condition not there. And you, so therefore, this is A module. This, acts, this is a matrix. You can let it act by from, from, from the light. And that means this produces, you multiply rho node GH this side, and uh, this produces core cycle condition. So in other words, you rho GH equal you rho G plus G U rho. H. So this is a conjugation by rho node G, this action. So it, it is a core cycle with values in this Galois module. Okay? Now I try to show that this is trace zero. Ah, before that, so that's why I can um, I now try to show that, so this naturally, by this stupid computation, that
that you get a map of the set phi x to h1 of g of small add x. Okay. Um, this is actually injective. Why? The proof is just uh, again stupid. So if rho plus of rho is equal to plus of rho prime, this means rho zero z plus e direct sum. This is this is rho is conjugate by one plus x rho node g plus u prime rho prime g it's inverse one plus x inverse but x square is zero this guy is one minus x okay so if you have involved twice x it's just gone because x square is zero so this is equivalent to saying that u prime rho g is x rho node g minus rho node g x plus u prime rho prime g, right? You multiply them from the light, rho node g. This is equivalent to saying that u rho g is 1 minus g x plus u rho prime g. So they are homologous. So therefore, this is all equivalent. So this is injected. All right. Um. As I said, by our choice of um, representative in this uh, phi x, phi x is isomorphic to d a x. Okay, just by as I explained already. So somehow this is into h one g add x. Okay, this is a set, this is a module. By universality, this is home CL lambda R AX. Okay, now trace zero thing. Actually, what I want to raise zero, actually I want to show that this, so this guy goes to this actually isomorphically going into Selma of a joint X. This is by definition that um, kernel of H1 G add X to f plus minus. So this is the composition group. Uh, this is a um, subspace spanned by co-cycles upper triangular over the composition group, upper near potent over inertia group. Okay? So it's the same definition, but I have x in it. So that this is in it. Okay? This is a direct factor of this guy as a Garo body, right? Add add rho is a trivial representation direct sum add of rho. And you tensor x, so it's a direct sum. So it's inside. Okay, why? First, trace zero condition. So I I if you have uh, some determinant of, say, matrix here, 
this is in M2 of AX and I suppose that this is um, M2 AX but um, this is congruent to one modulo X so it is in principal congruent subgroup so you can write this as 1 plus X Y uh, Z one direct sum W this X Y Z W is all in X then you stupidly compute uh, all e this Roman character you make a two product you get zero so this is 1 plus direct sum X plus Y no X plus W Right? This product is zero, this product is just x times one, w times one. So this is one plus trace of x part. Of the matrix. Okay, so the determinant is, you remember, that you row one direct sum you row is um, you row row times row zero inverse, right? Row is row is row node direct sum u prime row, and the making of u row is multiplying from the right side of row zero, and therefore you get that. You take a determinant of this. is actually therefore one plus trace of euro. But this determinant is there's a th this definition of this guy I, I changed now to that row is iota a composed with that row thing. Right, so the if you determinant doesn't change, it's a given one, right? So therefore, this is one, and therefore this means that trace is zero. So your row uh, has values in add capital X. So this is trace zero. So they I, I now related. So somehow, um, and uh, one thing I remark is that um, from you start from law, so Law restricted to the composition group is something star star zero star, and law restricted to inertia group is zero 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 star. I mean one one. Right. That means the. That means you law this one is this one <laughs> right so this u law restricted to inertia is upper near potent and uh, law restricted to the composition with upper triangular so this is u law is of course upper triangular on the composition group so you get this so the this phi x or all this is getting into Selma at x. But all the argument here you can reverse, right? If you pick a co-cycle with this property, you di make a direct, uh, you multiply from the right side row node to kill this and make a direct product, you recover uh, this, this thing. Therefore, 
this is isomorphic. Okay? Oh, this is easy argument. So I related this homomorphism uh, to from R to a, double a bracket X to the Selma U. So it's somehow left hand side is a set, right hand side is a module. So this set has a natural module structure. And of course, this is all the time true in the case of this functor. You plug in the, this kind of deformation functor, if it is compatible with a fiber product, then um, uh, you can create the addition on this phi x quite easily, but that's, I leave it to as an exercise. So this is a kind of reminiscence of this deformation functor if you plug in dual number. Then you get a tangent space of R over lambda. So that is home of four tangent space F. So this has a modular structure and is the same thing because this, this dual number just means F bracket F. So that if you know this kind of argument, it's the same thing. Okay. So now I want to relate this set or this module uh, phi over x to derivations okay so so i just write the derivation over lambda of r x but this is an a module so i have a phi from r to a such that phi composed with this row is a row node, right? And uh, from this, you can regard this as an R module using this phi. All right. So you can think of and the R is a lambda algebra. So this is by definition that delta from R goes to X in home lambda algebra home lambda module form I'm sorry X such that delta RS is the uh, uh, I'm sorry I used phi for something else I just write phi now Okay, phi naught of R delta S plus phi naught of S delta R. So this is a definition of derivations. And uh, this perhaps everybody knows, but I, I prove that lemma is that uh, all sort of this kind of map is supposed to be continuous and that the addict topology of these guys. Uh, Ax. This is, this is the set. Okay. Is isomorphic to derivation. Again, this is a set 
this is a module. Okay, so you have a, it look like you have a two module structure on this set by identifying cohomology group and the uh, derivations, and but they coincide. That's an exercise. Okay? And uh, um, so by doing this, this implies that derivation lambda Rx is isomorphic to Selma at X. And uh, this is module morphism. So it it it, it um, as R modules, but well, you can also say as A modules also. So why? Um, this is again the same stupid argument. Um, you pick phi here. You write this as phi node direct sum delta x. So this is the x part. And so this is the a part. Remember, this is a direct sum x. All right, and you compute the, uh, this is algebra homomorphism, so the one side. And you plug in this phi naught a plus delta x a phi naught b plus delta x b. And um, this is, by definition, phi naught a b direct sum delta x a b. And uh, a square zero condition tells you that this is phi naught A, phi naught B, but this phi naught is algebra homomorphism you can this way. And delta X A phi naught B plus phi naught A del, uh, phi naught A delta X B. Yeah, but um, you can interchange these are scalars, commutative ring. So this tells you that this guy e e is equal to that guy, and this is exactly this. And um, by that, it is isomorphic. So you can now relate the differentials. I mean, this differentials has a as a exterior derivative from R to omega R A and this is a universal derivation over lambda and in in, in a way that home R homomorphism this is R module over x is canonically isomorphic to derivation over r, but you can change this to a because x is a module. Um, the if you want, our way the same thing. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Over lambda, sorry. So um, such such module exists, of course, but uh, just bring this eraser to left and right, and I need to keep the number all the time both sides exist. Um,
right? I mean, for example, you just make omega R A to be, you just take free module over R A generated over R, the symbol DR, and then you take the um, derivation condition as a and uh, it, it has to be lambda so lambda linear so the d lambda a is lambda d a minus and you take all span of all relations you make a uh, quotient uh, then you get that obviously and you have uh, goes to R goes to the R gives that stuff. I, I should say that this this stupid construction doesn't tell you that this is a finite module over uh, R, but uh, um, it is. I mean, this is um, it's another exercise, but uh, as long as R is necessary. Right. So, conclusion is that by using that, I found that what I found is that you have this middle man phi x. On the one side, this is a derivation lambda of Rx, and this is by this universality. It is home, R home omega R lambda to X. Yeah, what I should have said. Yeah, right. But um, this is then this is, I mean, this is a, a, a anyway homomorphism, but this is a module. So you can replace this by omega r over a tensor r a to x, just insisting with a module because you are cutting at the a. On the other hand, this is isomorphic Selma of add x. All right. As long as x is finite. Okay. So um. So the here's a theorem. Selma of add row node contrary again dual is isomorphic to omega r lambda tensor r with phi node a. Um, phi node is from r to a such that phi node Impose the universal guy is row naught. Right. So this is what I declared at the very beginning. Right. So that's the purpose of this uh, lecture. Okay, so why? So by definition, so I, I, I have, I have, the problem is that this x is supposed to be just having finite three many elements. But this row, row node uh, can have, I mean, e for example, if this is a uh, universal guy, r is a quite a big ring. So it's not at all finite, so you need to do something. Okay. 
and um, um, A is a P profinite ring, so it is uh, uh, maybe I of A I A I finite P power. So it's Pontryag in dual is an injective limit hat. And I take this to be x. Kay? And the, the cohomology group of z of any injective limit xi kind of add ai check. As you know, the injective limit is compatible with cohomology functor. So by, by this, I can apply this argument for each individual piece. Right? So I just define phi of A bracket A check. This is obviously injective limit of phi of A A I check. Right? So you start from Selma of add rho node. So th this is inside H1 of G of add rho node star. Add rho node star is just a add rho node tensor over A of A Pontryag in dual. So this is just an injective limit of add of A I check. This is the X I, I'm taking. Right? So I apply this stuff. So this is by definition, therefore, Selma group condition and so on all commute with um, uh, injective limit. You can easily check. And this is check. So this is a limit of what I said above. This is a limit of home R omega R lambda tensor R A A I check. Right? And strictly speaking, this is all isomorphism. Um, now I would home lambda of say a lambda Pontryag in dual is home lambda a of home zp of uh, lambda qp over zp by junction formula this is home zp of A tensor lambda lambda QP over ZP. So this is A chapter. Okay. So that's 
I need. So this is um, A of omega r over lambda tensor r a a check and this this type of a junction formula I have home a omega r over lambda tensor r a home zp of a <laughs> qp over zp and um, this is um, Zp R over lambda tensor Ra Qp over Zp so this is omega R over lambda tensor Ra Pontryagin dual so you take Pontryagin dual of everything you get that's this I, 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 I made very far-fetched proof of this control theorem, right? I didn't try actually. This is a cohomology group, thermal group is. And so you, you write down, uh, so this means if you start from Selma add universal guy, right, is omega r over lambda, right? This, of course, you can write it down, the relation, this formula, as a relation of, therefore, this guy, so the Selma add law, Check tensor R A is Selma add no node check something like that. In other words, <coughs> you take a Selma group and that killed by this row zero guy, you recover this stuff. And uh, it's a very difficult actually to prove this just using Galois cohomology. Very crazy thing. And um, uh, proof looks um, rather far fetched, but uh, it is quite easy, right? And uh, for, uh, for an old man like me, this kind of stupid proof is better. Okay, so <coughs> oh, this adjunction formula you are saying lambda tensor over lambda a is a lambda algebra, so it's a. So I wrote another very stupid thing. Oh, but it's kind of hard for under to convince undergraduate this formula. First algebra book I read in in my life was Burbagi algebra, and that's full of this. I had very fun. Um, that was uh, junior year of my undergraduate. Up to that time, I mean, I didn't read any of math book, even high school time. Exam, I can get credit, just I can solve the problem without much reading anything. And uh, uh, then I encounter Brubagi in a very cheap bookshop, uh, I think outside Kyoto University. 
I think that some of the graduate students bought the full range of blue buggy, uh, very ambitious, and then couldn't read it, so uh, sold to the this second-hand bookshop. And um, uh, I, I bought it, each piece, one dollar or something. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that, I was very amazed. Math is actually interesting. So I need to thank this guy. I don't know who he is, or well, she is, I don't know. Anyway, so as I said that, uh, this omega r over lambda tensor lambda f is mr over mr square plus m lambda, right? This is cotangent space, and this is the this gives dimension. So the dimension f of this guy gives number of generators, I should say minimal, minimal number of generators, of R over lambda. And uh, this side is the Selma group over ad roba in dual, but this is finite, so I, I don't put check. Uh, so this gives the number dimension. F is, of course, dimension F. So, um, so by this, uh, what I really actually need to do is so what I just summarizing, um, if dimension f of Selma of a joint row bar is less than one, uh, Selma add row node check is a cyclic a module. In other words, there is an idea of A, and this is A. Like that. So this is, I need to prove this kind of things. Uh, that I will do tomorrow. I have 15 minutes left, so what I should do, uh, one thing, um, uh, so this is basically the end of the story today, but um, um, Yesterday, I was, by jet lag, I was so sleepy, I couldn't finish, actually, first of all, what I intended to do. And, um, well, maybe it's not, my excuse is just a jet lag, but perhaps just I get so old and my brain didn't work, and that might be the real reason. But uh, anyway, um, I would add something. First of all, Uh, Jeffon told me that I wrote uh, something um, bad implication. So I write uh, the linearity question implies semi simplicity question. Perhaps everybody knows implies cyclistic question. I, I, I might have written reverse. If you don't notice, you, I don't care, but if you noticed, I just acknowledge it. Uh, and um, what I'm trying is this one, okay? So, um, uh, the, for example, if you take some row bar, maybe start from R, that is induced representation of some quadratic field to Q, to F quadratic, 
uh, some finite order character. And of course, you need to suppose that this has to be uh, associated to holomorphic modular form. So the R determinant of complex conjugation is minus one. So the order representation, the all, all the holomorphic modular form is odd, or oh, general representation is odd. So um, if you can prove that uh, the even representation is associated to mass form, um, and you are young enough, you are a good candidate of Phil's medal, and uh, I don't guarantee it. Uh, uh, so the even case is still quite hard. Um, then, so this R is this R thing, so it's independent of Gothic P, as I said. So the I joint is um, this quadratic character, quadratic residue symbol, direct sum of uh, uh, induced representation of fq of phi minus. Phi minus is that you pick some sigma of gamma group G such that sigma restricted f is non-trivial. Then uh, phi minus um, G is phi G phi sigma G sigma inverse inverse. Or you can just say you plug in phi the commutator of g and sigma. Uh, and uh, so this is anti cyclotomic projection. So, Selma group of ad rho, ad r, is Selma group of, I don't define it, but you can guess it, of Selma group of in the FQ. Formation of Selma group is very much functorial, and this is isomorphic to class group of F tensor uh, ZP, P part. Uh, isomorphic. Well, strictly speaking, I need to put the Pontryag in dual, but uh, uh, again, this is finite, I don't care. And this is by Shapiro. Uh, the Selma group over F of phi minus. Uh, and um, this is, uh, you can do Iwasawa style interpretation. You have F, Q, and F, and then you take a splitting field of phi, and then uh, you take. Um, uh, Maximal, so uh, uh, this is ordinary, so this P has to split into two pieces. Uh, uh, and this maximal P abelian extension and ramified outside. Uh, For example, if phi, yeah, something like that. And you have a gamma group y, phi. And you take its phi isotypic component. And that is something like this. Okay? So um, if you know, so the, if plus number of f is divisible by p, and if this guy is also divisible by, by p, it won't be cyclic, obviously. So there, there, there should be some finite number of cases, finite number of primes, which you lose cyclicity. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, so you just kill this in the sense that p doesn't divide across number of f kind of things. Then uh, if you are successful, this will be, if you can prove this is cyclic, this guy is cyclic, and you compute like you were saw, um, uh, for example, the F is 
was a recursive case, and uh, say a class number is one, there's uh, some computation done, and um, of what I can compute is quite limited, not two billion, but <laughs> as long as I know of uh, the, 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 this kind of things, uh, the, the characteristic, uh, the, the that corresponding the LJ I wrote in the Iwasawa case, there's a corresponding power series, and it is actually unit times of just x minus alpha kind of things, or trivial I mean unit. And um, so the, 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 this, this linearity thing is quite persistent. I don't know why, but uh, um, so the Mindo asked me that, uh, is there any meaning of alpha? I don't know, but uh, Fermat's last theorem is somehow proven when Frey found the uh, meaning of the solution of Fermat's equation, right? So if you find a meaning, then you could prove that possibly, I don't know. So that's the key point. And afterwards, uh, just like Frey, you say that meaning, then there's a some, somebody very strong like Wiles pop up and then do the old hard work. And, um, but Frey still remains in the history, right? <laughs> Not bad. Um, so that's one thing. Um, another thing is that, so um, uh, this Selma group of a joint of rho is often cyclic. That, that's sort of something I do like to know. So why not you just take, so Selma group of trivial representation. This is something Iwasawa actually studied, but what he studied is just an omega to dj that twists by abelian character. In this case, odd, because this is even, you need to make it odd. So this is uh, sort of odd, then you need to make it um, So the R, the, the for this uh, modular form thing, then you tensor, now this is odd representation again, so uh, in the sense of three-dimensional odd representation, and the, you, you, you even, so the tensor is odd still, uh, even uh, character, like omega to the J, in this case odd, uh, then you uh, ask, whether uh, for almost all primes, this kind of thing is cyclic or not, or even semi-simple or not, something like that. And um, this, I'm quite certain it works. Um, but I would perhaps tell you uh, tomorrow that if you do Hilbert modular case, um, for example, the relative quadratic extension, you do this kind of things. Oh, it's not at all cyclic. You know the number of generator, minimum number of generator, is actually degree of your base Hilbert modular field. So it grows. Huh? Um, the, re the reason is clear, right? You do this kind of argument from F. Now it's not quadratic corresponding to this guy, the totally real field, because this is an even character, so this is totally real. Then you have a F Q amount of generator of this kind of Selma group. But by the action of chi, you cut it in pieces. Then each get one. So that, that's the main, main point. Of and um, I think I'm writing a book on this kind of things. Perhaps I can include this kind of things in it. Uh, but uh, um, so uh, that's how you interpret this type of things. OK, thank you. I don't think so. This is very peculiar property of, you know, the uh, a joint. 
in the sense that this Riemann zeta function has functional regression 0, 1. There's no middle critical point. This guy also. And Asai could have a, a middle critical point, first of all. And, um, uh, but Asai is a part of a join. So that, that's perhaps OK. But uh, the number of generators, so you can possibly count it. For you move around the P. The mo for most P, you, you would know the number of generators. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So Asai is perhaps OK. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe that one could do that, at least assign relative to the real, real case. If imaginary show up, things are quite complicated. That, that's kind of obvious, right? Because assign thing for imaginary, you need to do modular form of imaginary field. That's uh, Bianchi group. 